There are some more platelet clumps uh, that I found in the same patient. So the the 117,000 platelet count is falsely decreased probably um, because of this uh, these platelet clumps. So that could be that uh, the specimen was beginning to clot. Um, there could be other reasons for it. Um, I don't have the patient's history, but the printout says that it has, um, this patient has low RBCs, low hemoglobin and hematocrit, and the RDW is high, which means the space in between the RBCs um, when you're looking at them on the smear. Um, and you can see they're, they are very widely spaced out. Um, and then, you know, you have the low platelet counts. All the WBCs uh, are considered a normal count and uh, including if we did a differential, all of the fractions of WBCs would be normal. I have been seeing some retics in here. Um, I'm having a hard time focusing on this. I think that one is one as well, um, the bluish. And there's another one. And it's big and um, a more bluish uh, color than the other RBCs. There are nice platelets down here that are not clumped. And we're just moving around. Here is a lymphocyte, um, another small lymphocyte. Again, you can't really see the cytoplasm too well um, because all of it took up a lot of stain. But there, um, there is a good amount of it. It's just hard to describe how you can see it. So there's like a lighter purple in the middle, and um, that's your nucleus. And then uh, there's a dark, dark, blue, really, really dark blue, uh, that's your cytoplasm. Looking around some more, here's another neutrophil. Okay, another neutrophil. So if we were, if we were looking at this under the scope and doing a smear review, we would have basically found those, um, those platelet clumps and then figured out that's what the low platelets were for. Um, everything else seems to match in regard to um, the RBCs and the whites. You know, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot more neutrophils than anything else, was, which is normal. Uh, that's to be expected. And so we're just scanning here. Oh, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's like a, a sigma sign. Oh, and this one cannot be considered a band because you've got that filament. Um, and it looks like, you know, two muscle arms right there, but the filament uh, makes it so it cannot be considered a band. Another neutrophil. So, yeah, everything pretty much matches what the, uh, the printout says. So that's what we're going to go with, except for the platelet count. We would end up um, altering the platelet count. That's a smudge cell. Um, what happens is uh, you'll have a white, which is mainly um, lymphocytes. This would have been probably a large lymphocyte. Um, they get very delicate uh, when you're doing... Um, a stain, excuse me, not the staining process, the actual making of the smear. Um, some cells may become a little fragile. Um, they're white, usually white cells. And um, if, if they're predominantly lymphocytes, then you're looking at a patient that may uh, have CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Otherwise, um, if they're something other than a lymphocyte, it could be due to a degenerated cell um, in an old specimen. And a lot of times in the past, we have gotten um, pretty old specimens from um, the donations that we get for class. And therefore, you might end up seeing some smudge cells on some of those um, uh, those uh, smears that we have done, and I think this might be one of them. Um, <clears throat> they're also called basket cells, 
uh, because they look like they're, you know, forming a basket. This one doesn't, um, but basically it's going to happen in the white cell line. Uh, but again, if if they're predominantly lymphocytes and you see a um, you see a printout that matches CLL, most likely um, that would be the problem there or that would be the condition. Okay, so that's it for this video. This looks like a nice smiley face to end on. Uh, really cute neutrophil right there. Um, I will catch you all later. Have a great day and uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you like this video. Thank you. Bye.